Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over IXL topic solving two-step equations S.6. So I have IXL pulled up over here on the left and I have my steps for solving equations over here on the right. So we're going to work through this and we're going to do a couple practice problems together. Let's just quickly review our steps before we get started. First, we're going to draw a scale line because remember when we're solving equations, we want to keep it balanced like a scale. Step two, we're going to highlight our variables so we know what we are getting alone. And for step three, we're going to isolate our variable by doing the inverse order of operations, which means rather than working from left to right, we're now going to be working from right to left. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to label this as number one and write my question out. 7 minus 2m equals 3. Okay, first I'm going to draw my scale line. I'm going to highlight my variable m. Now I'm going to start performing inverse order of operations. So first I see that I have a 7 out here. And I don't see a sign in front of it, which means I know that it's a positive 7. The inverse of addition is subtraction. So I'm going to start by subtracting 7 from both sides. These 7s will cancel. I'm going to bring everything else that I see straight down. And now I'm going to calculate 3 minus 7, which is going to give me negative 4. I still want to get my m alone, and I have not done that yet. So I need to continue doing the inverse order of operations. I see that m is attached to negative 2 by multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. When we do this, this will cancel and m will be alone. We're going to calculate negative 4 divided by negative 2, which will give us a nice positive 2. We can type that in on IXL and get our next question. We have 2H plus 2 equals 10. We're going to draw that scale line, highlight that variable. Let's start talking about the inverse order of operations we have to perform. We see that we have a plus 2. We know that the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. These are going to cancel. We bring everything else we haven't used yet straight down, so 2h comes straight down. Calculate 10 minus 2, which gives us 8. h is still not isolated yet. 2 and h are attached by multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2. These will cancel. h will then be equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Type that in and get our next question. Okay, so I have number 3. 5 minus 2 times h equals 1. All right, here's my scale line. Highlight my variable. Let's start doing the inverse order of operations. So again, we see that we have a positive 5 out there. There's no symbol, which means there's a little teeny tiny implied plus symbol. We know the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, so we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. These will cancel. Additive inverses. Bring down negative 2h equals 1 minus 5 is negative 4. We see that h is still not alone. We see that negative 2 and h are attached by multiplication, so we're going to do the inverse, which is division, and divide both sides by negative 2. h will be alone, and negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2, again. And let's get another question on this page. We have 7 equals 3 plus 2q. Let's draw our scale line and highlight our variable. So even though 7 is on this side of the equal sign and q is on that side of the equal sign, we're still going to follow the same, 
same steps. So first, we see that we have a positive 3 right here. We're going to move that by subtracting 3 from both sides. These will cancel. We bring down our 2q equals 7 minus 3 is 4. Q is still not alone yet. We see that 2 and Q are attached by multiplication, so we're going to divide by 2 to both sides. This will reduce. Q will be equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2. All right, let's do a couple more. So we have 3 plus 3R equals 15. Draw that scale line. Highlight that variable. We see here that we have a little positive 3. So right away, we're going to do the inverse, which is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. Those cancel. Bring down 3R equals. Calculate 15 minus 3, which gives us 12. R is not alone yet. It's attached to the 3 by multiplication. We have to do the inverse of multiplication, which is going to be division. Divide both sides by 3, and we get that r is equal to 12 divided by 3, which is 4. All right, here's some good stuff. We have f divided by 4 minus 3 equals 1. Remember, draw your scale line, highlight your variable. Now remember, we're working backwards. So the first thing that we want to do is identify that minus 3. Now we want to say that we know the inverse of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. These will cancel. We're going to bring down what we didn't use. So what we didn't use is f divided by 4 equals... Let's calculate 1 plus 3. That gives us 4. F is still not alone yet. If you remember from solving one-step equations, the inverse of division is multiplication. So we have to multiply both sides of our equation by 4. When we do this, these 4s will reduce. They'll be gone, so we cross them out. And we'll get F equal to 4 times 4 which is 16. So here, f is equal to 16. Excellent, let's try another one of these. We have 3 equals u divided by 4 minus 1. We're going to draw our scale line, highlight our variable, start working backwards. We see a minus 1, the inverse of subtraction is addition, so we're going to add 1 to both sides. These will cancel. Bring down everything we did not use. U divided by 4 equals, calculate 3 plus 1, that gives us 4. U is still not alone yet. We see that U and 4 are attached by division, so we have to do the inverse, which is multiplication. So again, we're going to multiply both sides by 4, and ironically, get the same answer, that U is equal to 16. Excellent. Another one just like this. J divided by 4 minus 2 equals 2. Okay, scale line first. Highlight that J. Start working backwards. We see a minus 2, so right away we know we're going to add 2 to both sides because addition is the inverse of subtraction. Bring down J divided by 4 equals 2 plus 2 is 4. Oh my goodness. And then again, we're going to get the same answer. Multiply both sides by 4. Those will be gone. And j is equal to 16. Three 16s in a row. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see if we get a different answer this time. d divided by 8 minus 2 equals 1. Draw our scale line, highlight our variable. Let's start working backwards. We have a minus 2, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. 
these are going to cancel and we're going to get d divided by 8 equals 1 plus 2 is 3. d is still not alone yet. We see that these are attached by division. We have to do the inverse, which is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 8. This will cancel, and d will finally not be equal to 16, but 24. Okay, let's do one more together before I set you free. And perfect, what a great example to end on. We have a distributive property, so 9 times z minus 88 equals 45. Now, if you remember, what we have to do here is multiply. So we're going to do 9 times z, which is going to give us 9z. And then we're going to do 9 times negative 88, which we are going to do on the calculator on the side. 9 times negative 88 equals negative 792 and bring down or equals 45. We're going to draw our scale line and highlight our variable. We see that we have a minus 792 so we're going to do the inverse which is adding 792 to both sides. These will cancel Bring down our 9z equals 792 plus 45 gives us 837z is still not alone yet. We're going to divide by 9, divide by 9, and z is going to be equal to 93. Type that in here, and we're good to go. Wait, wait, look, this is a great question. We can't leave yet. Okay, let's see. Can I zoom this out? Perfect. Let's do this question before you leave me. We have 3 equals t plus 10 divided by 8. We haven't seen one like this before. We're going to draw our scale line. We're going to highlight our variable. Now, what we see here is that the whole piece t plus 10 is being divided by 8. So the first thing that we have to do is multiply by 8 and multiply by 8. So these are going to be gone and we're going to bring everything else straight down. So this is going to be 8 times 3 which is 24 equal to t plus 10. t is still not alone we have a plus 10, so now we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. These will cancel. T is now alone, and it's equal to 14. Great job.